My ex fiance went to a strip club for her bachelorette party after we agreed not to. So, I cancelled the wedding and now her family is harassing me. I'm Alex, 28 male, and until recently, I was engaged to Mila, 27 female. We've been together for four years and we're supposed to get married next month. But everything fell apart because of what happened at her bachelorette party. Mila and I met during our junior year of college. We were both part of the same study group for an economics class. I remember being struck by her confidence and how easily she could explain complex concepts to others. We started hanging out more outside of study sessions, and things just clicked between us. After graduation, we both landed jobs in the same city. Mila went into marketing, while I started my career in finance. We moved in together after a year of dating, and things were great. We complemented each other well, Mila's outgoing nature balanced my more introverted tendencies. I proposed last year during a weekend trip to the mountains. It was a place that held special memories for us, we'd gone there on one of our first vacations together. Mila was thrilled and immediately started planning our dream wedding. When it came to our bachelor and bachelorette parties, we had a long discussion about boundaries. I've never been comfortable with the idea of strippers or wild partying before a wedding. It just seems disrespectful to the relationship. Mila agreed and said she was fine keeping things low-key. We promised to respect each other's comfort levels. For my bachelor party, I decided to keep it simple. I went on a camping and fishing trip with my five closest friends. We rented a cabin by a lake for the weekend. We grilled, played cards, went hiking, and just enjoyed being out in nature. It was exactly the kind of relaxed celebration I wanted. Mila's bachelorette party was supposed to be a spa weekend at a resort about two hours away. Her maid of honor, Jess, 27 female, had organized it. The plan was for the girls to get massages, do yoga classes, and relax by the pool. Mila seemed excited about having a chill weekend to de-stress before the wedding. The night of her party, I texted Mila to check in and make sure everything was going okay. She replied that they were having a great time, had just finished their massages, and were about to have a nice dinner at the resort restaurant. I was glad she was enjoying herself and felt relieved that everything was going as planned. But then things took an unexpected turn. The day after Mila returned from her bachelorette weekend, I ran into her co-worker Jen, 26 female, at the local grocery store. Jen had also been invited to the party. I casually asked her how the spa weekend went, expecting to hear about relaxing treatments and girl time. Instead, Jen's eyes went wide and she stammered, Oh, uh, it was fun. Really fun. Crazy night. Then she quickly made an excuse about being late for an appointment and hurried away. Her reaction struck me as odd, but I tried not to read too much into it. When Mila got home that evening, I asked her again how the party went. She gave me the same story about massages, yoga, and lounging by the pool. I mentioned running into Jen and how she'd acted strangely. Mila brushed it off, saying Jen probably had too many mimosas at brunch and was feeling hungover. But over the next few days, I started noticing some weird behavior. Mila and her bridesmaids were constantly whispering and texting. They'd go quiet whenever I entered the room. Once, I overheard Mila on the phone with Jess, saying something like, he doesn't know, right? We need to keep our story straight. My suspicions grew, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Finally, after about a week of this, I decided to confront Mila directly. I sat her down and told her I knew something had happened at the bachelorette party that she wasn't telling me. I asked her to be honest with me. At first, Mila stuck to her original story. But as I pressed her, pointing out the inconsistencies and strange behavior I'd noticed, she eventually broke down. She admitted that they hadn't gone to the spa resort at all. Instead, they'd gone to a male strip club in the city. I was shocked and hurt. We'd specifically agreed no strippers, and she'd lied to my face multiple times about it. Mila swore up and down that she didn't participate and just watched, but I had a hard time believing anything she said at that point. I told Mila I needed some time to think and process everything. Over the next week, I was bombarded with calls and texts from her bridesmaids. They all insisted it was no big deal and begged me not to be angry with Mila. But their stories didn't add up. Some said Mila just watched, others hinted at lap dances. One even mentioned something about a private room, but quickly backtracked. The whole situation made me question everything about our relationship. If Mila could lie so easily about this, what else had she been dishonest about? The trust between us felt completely shattered. After a lot of soul-searching, I made the difficult decision to call off the wedding. When I told Mila, she broke down crying. She said it was just a stupid mistake and begged me to reconsider. But I couldn't get past the lying and the complete disregard for the boundaries we'd set together. Now I'm left dealing with the aftermath of this decision. We had already put down non-refundable deposits on the venue, catering, and other wedding services. I've had to make the humiliating calls to all our guests, explaining that the wedding is cancelled. My family thinks I'm overreacting. They keep saying it was just a harmless pre-wedding celebration and that I'm throwing away a good relationship over nothing. Mila's family is absolutely furious with me. Her father called and yelled at me for an hour, saying I was destroying his daughter's life over a childish bachelor party. I know that to some people, calling off a wedding over a strip club visit might seem extreme. But for me, it's not about the strip club itself. It's about the lying, the breaking of trust, and the complete disrespect for the boundaries we set together. How can I marry someone who can look me in the eye and lie repeatedly? I'm really struggling to process everything that's happened. One minute I feel confident in my decision, the next I'm second-guessing myself and wondering if I'm making a huge mistake. The thought of losing the future we had planned together is devastating. But so is the idea of entering a marriage with such a huge breach of trust hanging over us. I could really use some outside perspectives on this situation. Am I overreacting by calling off the wedding? Or am I right to trust my gut and end things now, before we're legally tied together? Any advice would be appreciated as I try to navigate this mess. Update 1. It's been about two weeks since I called off the wedding with Mila, and I wanted to give an update on the situation. A lot has happened, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it all. 
First, I want to thank everyone who commented on my original post. Reading through all the responses really helped me process my feelings and gave me confidence that I wasn't crazy for feeling so betrayed. It meant a lot to have support from strangers when I was feeling so alone in this. The day after I ended things, Mila showed up at my apartment unannounced. She was crying and begging for another chance. She swore up and down that nothing happened beyond watching the show at the strip club. Mila said she only went along with it because her friends pressured her and she didn't want to be a buzzkill. She promised it would never happen again and that she'd cut ties with the friends who led her astray. I listened to what she had to say, but I just couldn't bring myself to believe her after all the lies. The trust between us felt irreparably broken. I told Mila I needed space and asked her to leave. She reluctantly agreed but has been texting and calling constantly since then. A few days after that, I met up with my best friend and best man, Chris, 29M. He wanted to talk and seemed really upset about something. Over a couple of beers, Chris confessed that he had known about the change of plans for Mila's bachelorette party. Apparently, Mila's maid of honor had reached out to him to coordinate, making sure the bachelor and bachelorette parties didn't overlap. Chris said he felt terrible about keeping it from me, but he didn't want to betray Mila's trust or cause drama before the wedding. He figured it wasn't his place to get involved. I was pretty upset that he kept this from me too. Chris has been my best friend since we were kids, and I always thought I could count on him to have my back. Finding out he knew about the lies and said nothing really hurt. But the real bombshell came a few days later when one of Mila's bridesmaids, Kelly, 26F, reached out wanting to meet. Kelly and I had always gotten along well, but we weren't particularly close. She said she couldn't keep lying and wanted to tell me the full truth about what happened at the bachelorette party. We met for coffee, and Kelly spilled everything. According to her, the strip club wasn't a last-minute decision or something Mila was pressured into. Mila had been planning it for weeks. She knew I wouldn't approve, so she came up with the spa weekend story as a cover. At the club, Mila didn't just passively watch like she claimed. Kelly said Mila got multiple lap dances and was extremely flirtatious with the strippers. At one point, Mila even went to a private room with one of the dancers. Kelly swore she tried to stop her, reminding Mila about me, but Mila was drunk and said she deserved one last fling before getting married. I was absolutely gutted hearing all this. The level of deception and disrespect was so much worse than I had imagined. It wasn't just a momentary lapse in judgment, but a premeditated betrayal. Kelly apologized for not telling me sooner and said she felt awful about the whole thing. I thanked her for finally being honest and asked if she had any proof of what happened. Kelly ended up texting me some photos from that night that clearly showed Mila with the strippers, getting lap dances and disappearing into a back room. It was all the confirmation I needed that I'd made the right choice in calling off the wedding. When I confronted Mila with this new information, she broke down completely. She admitted everything Kelly said was true. She said she got caught up in the excitement of her last night of freedom and made a huge mistake. Mila begged me to forgive her, saying we could postpone the wedding and go to couples counseling to work through this. But for me, there's just no coming back from this level of betrayal. The trust is completely shattered. I told Mila it was over for good this time and asked her not to contact me again. She didn't take it well, alternating between sobbing and yelling that I was throwing away our whole relationship over one mistake. I'm still processing everything and dealing with the fallout. Mila and I were supposed to move into our new place next month, so I've had to move back in with my parents temporarily while I figure out how to get my name off the lease and untangle our finances. It's embarrassing at 28 to be living with my parents again, but they've been really supportive. Most of my friends and family have been understanding about my decision, though some still think I should try to work it out with Mila. They keep saying everyone makes mistakes and that throwing away a four-year relationship over one night is hasty. But they didn't see those photos or hear the full story of Mila's deception. Mila's family and friends are absolutely furious with me. They've been harassing me on social media, calling me a heartless jerk for humiliating Mila like this. I've had to block a bunch of people and even made my profiles private to escape the constant messages. It's been a really tough couple of weeks, but I know in my heart that I made the right call. I deserve someone who respects me and our relationship enough to be honest, even when it's difficult. I keep reminding myself that it's better to find out Mila's true character now, before we were legally married. For now, I'm focused on healing and moving forward. I've thrown myself into work and started hitting the gym more to stay distracted. I'm also thinking about taking a solo trip somewhere to clear my head once all the wedding cancellation stuff is sorted out. Thanks again to everyone here for the advice and support. It's meant more than you know during this difficult time. I'll post another update if anything significant happens, but hopefully this whole drama is behind me now. Update 2. It's been about a month since my last update, and unfortunately the drama with Mila isn't over yet. I really thought I was done with the whole situation, but some new developments have pulled me back in. Last week, I got a call from Tom, 28M, one of my groomsmen. Tom and I have known each other since high school. We played on the same soccer team and have stayed close over the years. He was one of the first people I told about proposing to Mila, and he seemed genuinely happy for us. When Tom called, he sounded really upset and said he needed to talk to me urgently. We agreed to meet at a local park. When I got there, Tom looked terrible, like he hadn't slept in days. He could barely look me in the eye as he dropped a bombshell, he'd been having an affair with Mila for the past six months. I was completely shocked. At first, I thought he must be joking, but the anguish on his face was real. Tom said he felt terrible and couldn't live with the guilt anymore, especially after hearing about the bachelorette party incident. He pulled out his phone and showed me text messages between him and Mila going back months. It was clear they'd been sneaking around behind my back for a long time. There were flirty exchanges, plans to meet up when I was out of town for work, and even some explicit photos. My stomach turned as I scrolled through their conversations. In one message, Mila had even referred to me as clueless Alex who would never suspect anything. I was furious and disgusted. This guy was supposed to be my friend. He was going to stand up with me at my wedding. And all along, he was sleeping with my fiancé. I lost control for a moment and punched Tom in the face. 
Then I told him to stay the hell away from me and never contact me again. I blocked his number and all social media before I even left the park. After I calmed down a bit, I realized I needed to confront Mila about this too. As much as I wanted to just move on and forget about her, I needed answers. I texted her asking to meet. She agreed quickly, probably thinking I wanted to reconcile. When I showed up, I didn't waste any time. I laid out everything Tom had told me and showed her the screenshots he'd sent. Mila turned white as a ghost. She tried to deny it at first, claiming Tom was lying because he'd always had a crush on her. But she quickly realized she was caught when I started quoting specific messages. Mila broke down crying, saying she never meant for it to happen. She claimed she was scared about getting married and Tom was there for her when she was having doubts. She swore it was over and begged me to give her another chance. Mila said we could still salvage our relationship and that she'd do anything to make it right. I just laughed in her face. I told her she was pathetic and that I was thankful I found out what kind of person she really was before we got married. I said I felt sorry for whoever ended up with her, because she clearly wasn't capable of being faithful or honest. Then I left her sobbing in the coffee shop. I'm still reeling from this new betrayal. Finding out about the affair on top of the bachelorette party stuff just confirms I made the right choice ending things. But it still hurts like hell. I keep replaying moments from the past six months in my head, wondering how I could have been so blind. I've cut off contact with our entire friend group. I don't know who knew what or who I can trust anymore. A couple of people have reached out, claiming they had no idea about Tom and Mila, but I'm not sure I believe anyone at this point. I'm throwing myself into work in the gym to stay distracted. I've also started looking at apartments in other cities. I think I need a fresh start somewhere new, away from all the memories and betrayal. My parents are pushing me to see a therapist to process everything. Maybe they're right. I've been having trouble sleeping and find myself getting angry at random moments throughout the day. It might help to talk to a professional about all this. For now I'm just taking it day by day and trying to heal. Thanks for listening to my drama, Reddit. Hopefully this is the last update I'll need to make about this mess. I'm beyond ready to put Mila and this whole situation behind me for good. Update 3. Hey everyone. It's been about 3 months since my last update. I wasn't planning to post again, but some wild stuff has happened and I needed to vent. So remember how I mentioned Mila's family had been harassing me online? Well, apparently they decided to take it to the next level. Last month, Mila's older brother Luke, 32M, showed up at my workplace. I was in a meeting when our receptionist called to say someone was asking for me. I went to the lobby, not suspecting anything, and found Luke waiting there. As soon as he saw me, he started yelling. He called me every name in the book, saying I'd ruined his sister's life and humiliated their family. Luke accused me of spreading lies about Mila and said I'd pay for what I'd done. Some of my co-workers overheard the commotion and came to see what was going on. Security had to escort Luke out, but not before he threatened to make me pay for hurting Mila. The whole incident was pretty jarring. I've known Luke for years, we used to watch football together and grab beers occasionally. Seeing him so enraged and threatening was surreal. My boss was understanding about the situation, but suggested I work from home for a few days until things cooled down. I was pretty shaken up by the whole thing. I filed a police report just to be safe, though I wasn't sure what they could really do. A few days after the Luke incident, I went out to my car one morning and found all four tires had been slashed. There was also a note on the windshield that said hope it was worth it, asshole. I can't prove it was Luke, but the timing seems awfully suspicious. I ended up having to shell out several hundred dollars for new tires. I've also installed security cameras around my apartment now, just in case. It sucks feeling like I have to constantly look over my shoulder, but I want to be prepared if Luke or anyone else tries something again. Then last week, I got a certified letter from a lawyer. At first I thought maybe it was related to the Luke situation, but it turned out to be even crazier. Mila is suing me for the cost of the cancelled wedding. The letter claims I broke off the engagement without cause and should be liable for all the deposits and fees we lost. I'm beyond furious. She's the one who cheated and lied repeatedly, but somehow I'm the bad guy who has to pay? The lawsuit is asking for over $15,000 to cover lost deposits, her dress, and other wedding-related expenses. There's even a line item for emotional distress. I've hired my own lawyer to fight this ridiculous lawsuit. He seems confident we can get it thrown out, but it's still going to cost me thousands in legal fees. Money I definitely don't have after paying for half a wedding that never happened. I'm tempted to countersue for my own emotional distress after everything Mila put me through, but I really just want this all to be over. In the midst of all this drama, I ran into Kelly, the bridesmaid who told me the truth, at a bar last weekend. We got to talking and ended up hanging out for a few hours. It was nice to talk to someone who knew the whole situation but wasn't judging me. We've texted a bit since then and might grab dinner this week. I'm hesitant to pursue anything romantic right now given all the craziness still swirling around. But it's been refreshing to have someone to talk to who understands what I've been through. Kelly apologized again for not telling me about the bachelorette party sooner. She said she felt awful watching Mila lie to me for weeks and was glad she eventually came clean. I'm beyond ready for this whole saga to be over. I just want to move on with my life and put Mila and all this drama behind me. But it seems like she and her family are determined to drag this out as long as possible. I'm trying to stay positive and focus on the future, but some days it's really hard not to get dragged back down into all the negativity. At least I can take comfort in knowing I dodged a major bullet by not marrying into that family. I shudder to think what my life would be like now if I'd gone through with the wedding not knowing about Mila's infidelity and deception. I'll post another update once the legal stuff is resolved. Wish me luck, Reddit. Hopefully the next time I write, it'll be to say this nightmare is finally over for good.